Back on the Y2K front, despite all of the assurances that the Y2K computer problems are under control. Tonight, by one estimate, 70% of Americans buying emergency supplies to welcome the new year. How many remember Y2K? Biggest lie that ever told in the church. I never forget we had our Sunday night service. It was New Year's Eve. We prayed for people and we blessed them. I said, I'll see you tomorrow. But I know people, man, they was thinking, why are we living our life in fear when we got the Holy Spirit? He shall show you things to come. God will prepare you before things happen. Please welcome to the stage, pastor and life coach, Randy Morrison. Father, once again, we are so grateful and thankful for every opportunity we have just to gather together and allow your word, your principles, your concepts, your ideas to wash our thoughts, our minds, God, that has been hijacked by social media. And God, we are exposing ourselves to things that is not benefiting us in the long haul. Help us, O oh God, today. We pray that you damage our ignorance and remove us from the spirit of fear so we can walk by faith and not by sight. In the name of Jesus and all who agree says, amen, amen and amen. Let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs 2 verses 1 to 6. You know that Solomon was the son of David and David tried his best to deposit into Solomon some wisdom, wisdom of how to uh, look to God for, for answers for the troubles we all face in life. And he said, son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your air to wisdom. Are you hearing some more? That's me. Now, now, that is not the Holy Ghost right there because it's distracting. Amen. So please help us. So he says, so that you incline your air to wisdom. What do you incline your air to? Wisdom. See, sometimes we think wisdom is this, the information out there, and we listen to every single thing. Not everything that comes to your air is supposed to get in there. Because sometimes we think just because a person has the right or the ability to speak, that we have a right to listen. Because how many of you know that if somebody tells you something that is dumb, you are now dumb for hearing it? Is anybody ever listened to somebody and said, oh, that was dumb? Yeah? It make you dumber. But he says here, you've got to incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. He says, yes, if you cry out for discernment. How many can use some? How many know we need some discernment in this day and age that we live in because the line is blurred? So you, you have to know where you're drinking from, which well you're putting your, your pail in. It's very important. Because sometimes we think we can just uh, accept everything. Like uh, the late Fred Price used to say, we swallow everything, hook, line, sinker, fisherman, pole, and boots. I always like that. Huh? So we just grab every single thing that comes and thinking that just because uh, we accepted that means it's right. No. He who transfers truth can also transfer error. You see, Peter, one time when Jesus asked the disciples, who do men say that I am? And they look at each other. Then Peter said, I got it. He said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Right? So he had the revelation based on the Spirit of God engulfing him and putting within him the answer. Now, not too long after Peter had a revelation from God and answered Jesus' question correctly, 
That same Peter, when Jesus said, I have to go to Jerusalem and I have to give my life as a sacrifice. Not so, Lord. And what did Jesus say to him? Oh, that is so cute. <laughs> Jesus, look at the same man who had a revelation of truth. Now he was in error. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. So God could be using you one day. And the devil could be using you the next day. That's why you need discernment. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You see, because we, we, we don't understand that we, we, we need discernment to be able to deal with life. So he says, if you cry out, notice what you have to do. You got to cry out. You got you to gotta be desperate for it. And lift up your voice for understanding. He says, if you seek her, talking about wisdom as silver. See, if you seek wisdom the way you seek to get a paycheck. Amen. See, because the thing you want in life, you don't care what it costs to get it. You'll pursue it. You'll go after it. You'll put a time in to get it. So he says, you've got to seek for her as you're seeking for silver and search. Seek and search for her as for hidden treasure. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. That is powerful. See, what you're pursuing after is very important if it's going to benefit you or not. Because we are seeking for things that has no benefits for the advancement of our lives. Because if you seek for this thing, you'll be lots further along than you are right now. Amen. See, the only thing that is holding us back where we are is our ignorance. I could stare you down too. <laughs> that's the only thing that's holding you back. You think it's people, you think it's systems. No, your ignorance. God says, my people are destroyed for a lack of what? Knowledge. And he said, because you have rejected my knowledge, you are getting rejected too. You will never get what God has for you if you're not pursuing what he has for you. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his way of doing and being right. And then all of these things, oh, glory be to God, shall be added to you. See, we spend time running after stuff instead of stuff running after us. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Now, now, notice here, he talk about knowledge, he talk about understanding, he talk about wisdom. Remember, knowledge comes from information. Could you agree with that? Right? And it comes from the information that you are exposed to. Everything you know, somebody taught you. I'm just waiting for an Amen. Everything that you know, somebody taught you. How do I know that? Well, when you first came into, out of your mother's womb, you were dependent on your mother or your father for everything. They, 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 they told you, Mommy, Daddy. You wasn't smart enough to say, how do I know that? Right? You just take their word. Right? They, they taught you how to, to, to wash your face, brush your teeth, taught you how to take a bath, how to clean yourself. You didn't just wake up one day as a baby and decide to say, hey, I'm going to do it myself. <laughs> you notice when you're a, a child trying to do things itself, it makes a big mess. Right? So, so in life, we have to expose ourselves to 
the kind of information that will position us in the right place to get what we want out of life. If you are not getting what you want out of this life, it's nobody's fault. Please stop blaming people for your problem. Well, they had a part. <laughs> they, they did this to me. As you heard me say before, it's not what's happening to you. It's your response. Amen? Amen. See, when you're responding out of fear sometimes, what happens? You can make things worse. Than it really is. Okay, we're going to be quiet today. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll work with you. So knowledge comes from information. Understanding comes from explanation. I'm just trying to explain to you how to use wisdom. And wisdom is the application of the information that you understand. Because what you don't understand, you never act on. That's why you don't act on this book. Because if you get insight into how this thing worked, you're going to work it. I said, if you understand how this thing works, you're going to work it. Huh? So you understand the power that God has placed in his word when we correspond with him and we act upon his word, we can get what the word says we can get. This word is not so for heaven, it's for here. It's God's manual to show you how to navigate the issues of life. Remember, when you do not invest in knowledge and understanding and wisdom, it's a sign you have misplaced priorities in your life. Anytime you don't have understanding and knowledge of life, it's why? Because it never made it a priority. If you never make learning a priority, how many you know you're going to be ignorant? Right? See, we do not make research uh, a priority. We want everything to be sp uh, uh, spoon-fed to us. Instead of us uh, doing it ourselves. Paul said to James, study to show yourself. You don't study to, to show me how many scriptures you need. Huh? See, you can read the Bible all you want. It not do you any good until the Bible starts reading you. Because when it starts reading you, you say, that's me, I'm guilty. I'm going to change. Are you still in the house? So, we, we need to make God's word, God's principles. So, Paul was saying the. Uh, uh, that Paul, David was saying to his son here, he says that you, you, you need to cry for it. You need to search it because that's the only way you will have the fear of the Lord or understand how God wants you to function on the planet. Now Solomon says in Proverbs 4 and verse 7, he says, wisdom, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get Wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. He says, exalt her, and she will promote you. How many wants a promotion? Promotion come by wisdom. Your ability to use information correctly. That's why you don't get promoted in your job. I don't care how long you're there. You're not growing in wisdom. You're not growing in understanding. They are not going to get promoted. See, we have this, this, this thing in our mind that, that, that we deserve. You deserve nothing. I, I think I, I've been here long enough, so I think I deserve more. Really? More of what? The nothings you're producing? I, I know this message is tough, but it's, it's, we talk about wisdom here. We, we talk about understanding here. Our foundation, foundation scripture said Jesus grew in wisdom. He grew in a stature and in favor with God and man. See, to, to grow in this thing, there, there must be some exposure to it, some, 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 some action that is taken on your path. He says, when you exalt her, she will promote you. She will bring you honor. When you embrace her, she will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory. She will deliver you. Glory be to God forevermore. That's why you need to pursue it. Because wisdom has things in it that can help your life. 
Amen. See, God's wisdom and favor will get you to do in one moment. The power of wisdom can get you to do things in, in a moment of time that would take years for others to achieve. That's one, one, one word of wisdom. Can elevate you above everybody else. All through the Bible you find people who apply the wisdom of God always excelled. This is good stuff. If you want to know what God wants you to have, you got to start with wisdom. It got to be wisdom. James 1.5 says, if you, you want to know what God wants you to do, if you want to know what God wants you to do, if you want to know what God wants you to do. How many of you know that's our hang-up? Not knowing what God wants us to do. Because if you know what God wants you to do, you'll be doing it, right? But since you do not know what God wants you to do, what do you do? What do you do when you do not know what to do with that child of yours, a husband of yours, that wife of yours? What do you do when you get laid off from the job? What do you do when bad things happen to good people? You need the wisdom of God. I said you need the wisdom of God. So he says that, that, that if you want to know what God wants you to do, he says, here, here, here's this, here it is, ask him. <laughs> I, I just love that. Huh? See, because we have a tendency to want to ask other people like us. I will never ask you to help me with a problem if you cannot solve your own problem. Hmm? Now, if you overcome your problems, then maybe I'll come and ask you how you did that. Right? That, that's why you're supposed to be an overcomer. See, people who know how to solve problems are placed in a position of authority. Hmm? And when you know how to solve problems, you get rewarded generously. Lord, I'm trying my best. Because I know we, we, we live in a culture that means, you know, every single thing is supposed to be the same. Everybody should be even and everybody should be equal. Equal opportunity, equal this and equal that. You heard me said before, you know what equality is, right? You're born and you're going to die. We all have that in common. Right? You, you didn't come here from, from Pluto or Mars. You're not an alien. That's why Jesus could relate to humanity because he was born of a virgin, born under the law, and he showed us how we need to, to use God's word to cause our lives to have meaning and purpose. Jesus has not done anything that he never asked us to do. Because everything he had done, he did it as an example that we should follow. 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 His example. So what I do when I run into a storm, I do what Jesus did. What did Jesus do when he, he ran into a storm? Oh my God! No, no. What did Jesus do when he ran into a storm? He stood in the boat and he said, Peace! Be still when last you talk to your problems. When last you look at those bills and says, I know I'm behind, but bless God, in the name of Jesus, I got a woody invention, a creative idea. I'll be coming back to you soon and pay you off. Huh? Ask God for wisdom. And that's what uh, God is saying. Ask Him. And he will gladly tell you, for he is always ready. See, God is always ready. See, you know, uh, back in the day, we used to say, oh, you know, let's wait on the Lord. Let's wait on the Lord. And 30 years later, he's still waiting on the Lord. If it take me that long to wait on the Lord, then something is wrong with the Lord or me. Huh? Waiting on the Lord doesn't mean you sit down and do nothing. 
Have you ever been to a restaurant and seated you at your table? Then another person come and say, hi, my name is John. I am your waiter. And John will look at you and says, uh, here is the menu. And John have the gall to leave. Uh, because you're not the only one he is serving. But John is still waiting on you. Because sometimes John will come back and ask you, are you ready to order? Well, man, I, I don't know what I really want. Oh, my God. You need to be slapped. <laughs> One of my pet peeves is going to a fast food restaurant, you know, people stand up in line, you know, 10 deep. The person, they stay on his phone. Then he came and said, ah, 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 ah. Make up your mind! <laughs> we are so dull that they have to put numbers by every food item. <laughs> hmm? That's their giving number one or number two or something. Right? But a waiter will occupy until you are ready. So when you place your order, then you leave again. In other words, waiting on the Lord does not mean sit around doing nothing. I can pray about something, and I'm waiting on the Lord for an answer, but in the meantime, I'm prepping myself to get an answer I prayed for. Huh? If I, I see a company I want to work for, I want to study that company. See, some of you, you, you just don't get it. When you're going to go for an interview for a job, please know something about the company. Yeah. See, because we, we go and apply for work in places we never study. Yeah. Why do you want to work there? Do you ever ask you that? Why do you want to work here? Yeah. Well, well, I got some bills I got to pay. <laughs> Notice they said, uh, don't call, don't, we'll call you, don't call us. They never get back to me because you're not qualified. Because your priority is wrong. Nobody, bosses doesn't hire you to pay your bills. Huh? I got bills to pay, so do the boss. And more than you. See, because we think that's because you employ your entitled. Yeah, you're entitled to be fired. That's what you're entitled for. Because the mindset that we have, we think that, that the universe and this world is supposedly waiting on us. No, the earth is waiting on you. The soil will never give you a harvest until you first get out there, dig the dirt, stir the dirt, and plant the seed and water the seed, and wait, glory be to God, every single day, just making sure it's germinate. Hallelujah. you got to put in the work. Our culture don't want to work. America is getting lazier and lazier Every single day. I saw on the news, uh, you know, in California, they said they're going to pay them $20 for flipping a burger. Okay. Now, this is a good boss, man. He said, that, that cost got to go somewhere. It got to go to the patrons, the people who come and buy the food. Yeah. So they raise the price. Say, so you, you, you think your striking only affect the company, your striking affect me too. Because now I've got to pay more for the burger. And it's still not any good. Huh? We get raised, do we do better jobs? That's one thing that bugged me with sports athletes. The last year of the contract, they, they just turned it up and play really, really good. Until they get a contract, then the next day they're done again. That's stealing money. I am preaching and I'm telling you the truth. 
Uh, you want to raise, why don't you raise your productivity then? Woo! I don't know if this is a Democrat or Republican sanctuary. <laughs> and I'm neither. I believe the Bible. Amen? Amen. So, so God says here, I will really give you bountiful supply of wisdom to all who ask him. Notice what God will give you when you ask him. That's why I don't believe in praying for money. Because money is a reward for solving problems. The bigger your problem, the bigger the money. Amen. Right? It's a reward. It's not an entitlement. It's a reward. You do something that can cause progression and growth, you'll be rewarded. Hmm? You can't come and ask for more when you're not doing more. I'll leave the side. I'm going to work on this side. Yeah, you, you. Come on. And God says you ask for wisdom. Because wisdom is the ability to use information correct, correctly. Right? So we need to ask for wisdom. We need to ask for wisdom. Notice, if God is willing to give us wisdom when we ask him, then I believe our first response to a problem is to check with God before we open our mouth. If God says, Wisdom and I come from his mouth. So, so then I got to check with God, not the problem or somebody else. See, we got to get our priority. God first in everything. Ask him. Wisdom is making available to us when we recognize our limitations. See, if you are full of yourself, you're not going to look to God. That's the Bible said, humble yourself. Under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Humble yourself. See, because sometimes we think we got it all. I got this. I got this. I can, I can handle my liquor. I can, I, I can handle my jobs. I got this. You, you think I'm a child? I, I'm adult. I, I'm mature. That's adult beverage. Hmm? How many of us has failed because we thought that we could handle certain things in life? And found out we can handle it. See, one thing I understand, except you become as a little child, Jesus said. Child is totally dependent. When it comes to life, this thing called life, you're waking up, you're going to sleep, you're going around. When it comes to movement in this world, you need the wisdom of God. You kind of try to do it based on what somebody has told you or taught you. You need the wisdom of God because I've discovered not everybody have your best interests in mind. See, when we are following God's wisdom, all of creations will work for us. Did you hear what it says? Yes. When you are following the wisdom of God, all of creation will work for you. Because God will not give you an answer for something that will not pan out. When you do not work with the wisdom of God, all creation work against you. I want to take a look today at the life of King Solomon. He said he was the wise, one of the wisest men of his day. And the reason I want to use him as an example, uh, Solomon had issues, you know, like you do. 
Don't look at me in that tone of voice. Your halo is crooked. Despite the fact that he was not a perfect man, can I say this to you? God is not looking for perfect people. All God is looking for is your availability, not your ability. Because he wants to pour into you. He wants to give you what you don't have. So Solomon, even though he was not perfect, you know, he made a lot of mistakes, you know, when he finally became king, you know, he went and he signed a treaty with the, with the Egyptians, you know, and then you, you get some of the women, you know, and he married them, and, and then they started to take him away from the things of God. Because they started to, to, the temple was not built yet, so they were trying to, to, to worship in a high place, you know, and it was mixed religion. A little bit of Buddha, a little bit of Hare Krishna, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Because everybody will bring what they got. Just like in relationship, you bring in what you have, what you're exposed to. That's why you got to sort some things out. Amen. But in spite of Solomon, imperfection, and the great misfortune he had in his life. He was a man who successfully applied the wisdom that God has given to him. See, due to the fact that he was aware of how limited his ability actually was, he depended on the knowledge that God possessed. So he can be productive. He wasn't productive by himself. Even though he, he has gained the prominence of the wisest man, King Bathsheba, and so many people came to sort his knowledge, even pay him big money for it. You know, people will pay you for your information. Any information you don't have, you always pay for it. That's why people are smart enough to put information in a book. So you've got to buy the book. Huh? A friend of mine was saying one time, he said he went to a store and his, a bookstore and he was looking around and, and he saw this book that he liked and he, he bought it. It was $85. And the person was with him and says, Dang, that's a lot of money for a book. He said, you don't understand. I bought for $85 what it took this person 20 years to figure out. Amen? See, if you want to know what Bill Gates know, buy his book. If you want to know what Steve Jobs know, buy his book. They will share with you how they did it. But you're so cheap. The Bible said you should, you should purchase wisdom. Show me your library and I'll show you your future. All through the years, I spent close to over $30,000 in books and information. It's all right here. Well, it's in the cloud, really. Huh? Anything I want to study, I can find. And the I just found the, the, the ad AI to it. Woo! Woo! Huh? So now, now instead of me trying to figure it all out, I can just type it in and say, AI, hey, go get that for me. Boom, but well, thank you. Go get that for me. Bring that back. Oh, glory be to God. Information is at our fingertips. If you are not smart, it's nobody's fault. Especially living in the United States of America. Hmm? Whatever you don't know, you can Google it. When somebody asked me, Pastor, what do you think about this? I said, uh, I'll get back to you. <laughs> and I go, and I Google it. Oh, and then I do the study on where the information came from and why the information was shared. Is that what is how? Why? 
and when it was used. Wow. Nobody's shouting and jumping. Because we, we don't like to do the homework to get what we want out of life. We just want to live in miracles. I tell you, we had preachers lied for us for so long. This is a day and age you have to do, put in the work. You have to put in the work. So, so Solomon, uh, he had to deal with uh, taking over the kingdom from his father. David. So David tell him, hey, you need wisdom to do this. You can't just do it because I did it. See, see, Solomon never killed a Goliath. He never killed a bear or a lion. But his daddy did. So he said, Dad, I don't need to go out there and try to do that. You have done it. Now give me the information what you use to get it done. That's why it's important to have people in your life who is much smarter than you are. In 1 Kings, the third chapter, despite the shortcomings of Solomon, in verse 3 it says that he loved the Lord and followed his father's example of walking according to God's word. Now, now, I was baffled when I was reading this. In verse 2 and 3, he, he made a treaty with Egypt that God never wanted him to make a treaty with. He married an Egyptian woman, okay, bring them in the house, then they mess him up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Huh? But the Bible says he still loved the Lord. Don't allow your failures to keep you from still loving God. Hmm? He, he still loves God. You can love God in spite of what you are going through. In spite of your setbacks, in spite of your difficulty, you can still love God. That, that's why repentance is so cool. Acknowledging your shortcomings. David says, I acknowledge my fault. I acknowledge my failure. Well, you don't want to do that today because in today's society, they hold it against you for the rest of your life, right. Right. right? They document it, and then they remind you. But God never talked to Solomon about all the mess he made up. And why was that? Because Solomon realized his shortcomings. He realized that he had shortcomings. So, so, so when uh, God wanted to, to, to minister through him, and God uh, came to him, the Bible said in verse 5 at Gideon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God, the God of the B-I-B-L-E, not a Baptist God or a Catholic God or the God you think is God. I am so glad that God is not a man that he should lie. See, we try to use the word of God uh, in unscriptural ways to condemn people. God is not about you looking at your downfall. You're looking at your, your getting back up. It's more about your comeback instead of your setback. People talk about, oh God, so many people are going to go to hell. Well, well they're going to meet you there too. God knows our shortcomings. That don't mean because he knows you're going to go or do it. That's the liberal sin. Yeah. Huh? But how many times if the pressures of life can get you to make not sound decisions? Yeah. 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 And the reason why is because you're dealing with people. I said not everybody have your best interests in mind. <laughs> people come into your life with different uh, ideas and concepts. When David was hiding from Saul and, and the men came to, 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 to be with, with David, he says, why are you come? Why, why are you here? What, what? Because they're going to be the king, that's the reason why you come. 
See, we, we, people have wrong reasons, wrong motives. People are only interested in you for what they can get from you. Case in point, if you win the lottery, you will find out about cousins and uncles and aunts that you never knew you had. Right? And then what they try to do? Condemn you. Huh? You come into some resources, everybody think now that uh, you know they're entitled. They didn't come before. Woo-hoo. So when God came to Solomon, in spite of all his faults, look what God says. God said, Solomon, ask what shall I give you? Could you imagine God coming to you and giving you a blank check? And you know that he would trillions upon trillions upon trillions upon trillions. Huh? See, the first thing you think about is yourself. The first thing you think about is showing off. The first thing you think about is going and buying stuff so people can think you're all of that. But look at Solomon. And Solomon said, You have shown great mercy to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness and uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this great kindness for him, and you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. In other words, Solomon says, Man, I, I got bigger problems right now. He did not make his priority be ahead of the priority of the people. Hmm? Sometimes we make our priority above the priority of everything else. And that's why we are led astray. But here you find Solomon was talking about the kingdom that he inherited. And he's trying to figure out, my God, how, how can I deal with this? Because he know all the troubles and the problems that David been through with people who, who tried to deceive and lie and cheat him. Right before that, there, there was one who was trying to take over the kingdom. That could get you resentful. That could get you upset. But when God came and God says, what do you want? And he says that my... The mercy, you show great mercy to your servant David because he walked before you in truth. You have continued this great kindness for him and you have given him a son to sit on the throne. In other words, I want the same thing that my daddy got from you. See, sometimes, young people, you got got to look and see how your parents get to where they are. And see the, the hand, of God, hand of God working in their lives. Because they can just get it one way and you think you get it another way. Woo! Woo! <laughs> oh God. Now, oh Lord my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David, but I am a little child. I'm not experienced in dealing with this thing. I do not know how to go out or come in. Solomon? Well, you shouldn't be in leadership if you do not know what to do. That's the problem with America today. A lot of people want to be in leadership and do not know what to do. Boom, take that. Hmm? See, humility is king. When it comes to getting from God, the Bible said, humble yourself. See, not promote yourself. Humble yourself. I live my life this way. I don't know much. That's why I pray and say, God, give me wisdom. 
Solomon realized that the war that was going on inside of him, the mistakes he had made, he realized, I don't want to mess up on this one. I don't want to mess up on this one. So God, he called out. He says, I'm a little child. Children are ill in experience. They do not know how to go out or come in. He says, and your servant is in the midst of your people. It's a big turmoil. They're about to have civil war. <laughs> Who you have chosen a great people, too numerous to be numbered or count. He said, my God. Solomon realized you can't please everybody. It's hard being in leadership. See, some of you want to be in leadership. First, start leading yourself. Yeah? Thinking leadership is just making decisions. You gotta have wisdom to make decisions. And a, a true leader, when he makes a decision, he stick by it. Not try to please. We have leaders that are trying to please everybody. Somebody just gotta make a decision and that's it. Let a chip fall where it may. Jesus made a decision one time when he looked at a whole multitude and he says uh, to eat my flesh and drink my blood and they decide they're not going to follow him anymore. That's a bad leader. We won't follow you. Then Jesus looked at his disciples and said, do you want to go too? Yeah? Jesus stuck by his decision. It's cost to follow me. See, we compromise so people can follow us. Churches is compromising today. Embracing every single thing under the sun in the name of, of, of getting people in the church. I saw the other day this one church that for Easter, they didn't want to mention the name of Jesus or, or the blood of Jesus. These young pastors got to stand before God. Because they're more interested in about having more likes than the truth. You know, if you want more likes, you have to compromise. You have to give the people what they want, what they like to hear. Because people don't want to have itching ears today, the Bible says. And Solomon said, I got to make some decisions. And not everybody's going to like it, God, so I need your help. I need your help. See, the, the biggest weakness we all have is that we do not know everything about life. Can you agree with that? You do not know everything. Quit trying to think you know everything. I know you got a degree, but that degree is limited to your exposure. Because there's somebody who is smarter than you are. You just have not run into them yet. Amen. We do not know everything in life. And Solomon recognized that he needed a power greater than the wisdom he had to lead his people. We need something bigger. We need the wisdom of God. I know election is coming up and people are all, I said, oh God, I'm praying. Uh -huh. Oh God, oh Jesus. Oh God. Anybody should be praying this will be the church. Oh, Lord Jesus. Look at this one. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Look at the other one. Oh, Lord Jesus. Hmm? Lots of confusion out there. Because we're going to make decision, and when we make decision, we have to live with a consequence. Remember, the Israelites says, we want a king to rule over us. We want someone like us who have our beliefs, who have everything that we like. Sam, Samuel went to the Lord and and he's crying, and the Lord said, don't cry. Give the people what they want. Hmm? See, then, then, then they started to cry. He said, they're going to do this, they're going to tax you, they're going to do this, they're going to do that, they're going to do the other to you. Do you still want them? Oh, yeah. Right? See, what we need, we need someone with God's wisdom. Someone who has God's mind. Who can see, listen to what God is saying, where our nation fit in the big picture? Because Jesus says, in the last days, perilous times should come. Men will be lovers of themselves. They'll be proud. They'll be boastful. They'll be blasphemous. They'll be disobedient to parents. They'll be unthankful, unholy. Read your Bible. Bible. 
We are living underneath an illusion today because wisdom is lacking. Wisdom is lacking. And Solomon says, God, I need it. And I don't know about you, but I need the wisdom of God. I need the wisdom of God. He said, I want the wisdom, therefore, to, so your servant can understand, have an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil. How many know we need discernment between good and evil? The line is blurred today. We call it good, bad, and bad, good. You tell the truth, people want to cancel you out. But this was Solomon's prayer. He said, for who is able to judge this great people but yourself? Have you ever noticed we never judge others, other people based on our strengths? See, we, we judge people based on our weaknesses, of our own perception that we have inside ourselves. Last scripture, Jesus said in Matt, Matthew 7, 1 to 3, he says, do not judge or you too will be judged. So, so Solomon said, I, I need wisdom to, to do righteous judgment. I, I don't want to make my judgment based on my biases. Because all our judgment is based on our biases, what we think. Not getting all the facts, what we think. When Saul was called by God, they, they, they thought he was a bad man. We heard of him. And God says, what I cleanse, what, what, what I change, what I transform. He said, he's a, he's a servant of mine. See, sometimes you judge a person based on your experience with them. Don't understand. Time has passed and things happening in that space that can impact that person's life for the better or the worse. Huh? See, you, 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 you can't judge anybody because remember, when you point one finger, their fingers pointed back at you. Solomon said, I want to make good judgment. That's why when they brought the, the harlots, two harlots, you know, God is so good to unsafe people. He said two harlots came to him. Night girls. Red light district girls. Harlots. Right? For a dispute because they say that this is my child. Because one rolled over the kid and killed it. And the other one went to the dispute and they asked Solomon, what should we do? And one of them saying, it's my child, it's my child. Anytime the person is really loud and always trying to take over the atmosphere, they are wrong. <laughs> because people who are abiding in truth remain calm. Trying to defend yourself. Every time you try to defend yourself, there's a devil there. But what Solomon did, he, he watched them. One is this, yeah, that's my child. And Solomon said, can you give me a sword? I'm going to split his side in two. Yeah, go ahead, Solomon. That's what, that's right. Because it's, and the other said, please, no, please don't do that, Solomon. Please don't do that. Just, just give her the child. And Solomon said, no, you're the mother. Because a true mother will not abort a kid. Come on. A true mother will not do anything to harm their children. Hmm? How did Solomon did that? Based on the wisdom of God, he saw the better good. And as we walk through our days, we need to start to see the better good. See the good in people, not just the bad. Quit going around and judging other people like you or that, all of that. Because I guarantee you, there is something in your closet that you don't want anybody to know. Let's stand to our feet. Come on, I could go on and on today. Come on, somebody. Amen.